well, usually, depending on um, the year, <laughs> and we're hoping next year won't be any different, from April to December. And this course is usually run in a, a, black, a block of 31 weeks over three terms, so about 10 week terms across that period. In the first term, we look at what we call foundation skills, basic skills and um, building up your oeuvre of understanding how to be a makeup artist, understanding hair and understanding the tools of the trade. We look at fashion and editorial and we also look at eras. So what, what do you need to do to create a look from the 20s or the 30s or the 40s? Because that will be your bread and butter. Second term, we start to look at stage and screen. So how do we apply the looks that we learned in term one to if you're on stage or if you're in front of the camera? And then we look at further character looks that you might come across. When it comes to characters, we also look at wigs in term two because that's very important to um, building a look for stage or for screen and ensuring continuity. And then we also investigate in term two wig knotting as well because we know from industry that there are very few wig knotters in New South Wales or working in Australia generally, generally and we'd like to um, if we can, if anyone is interested in wig knotting, move people into the industry that way. There are jobs there. Uh, term three is about professional practice. So how do we put together everything that we've learned in term one and term two and then use that information uh, professionally? How do we collaborate on productions? How do we collaborate on events like music video shoots? How do you create looks under lights for anything that's pre-filmed for screen? Um, and how do you work professionally on a, on a production? So we actually place you on a production and uh, you are independently responsible as the head makeup artist for gaining the skills, um, for, sorry, applying the skills in relation to the concept and design from the director and the designers. So, so in a nutshell, that is the delivery. So first term, as I was saying, is foundation skills. Second term is applying it to stage and screen. And third term is using it professionally. And the other one thing I forgot to mention in third term is we also do prosthetics. So we do a, a full unit of prosthetics um, where you actually create a full look, facial, full facial prosthetic, not just smaller pieces. And uh, we do a photo shoot of that too. Again, there's a lot of prosthetics work out there, so that's really useful to have on your CV. And alongside that, in uh, Term 2, too, we also do a lot of special effects, which obviously comes under stage and screen practice. Uh, very quickly, a couple of other things. We have several tutors who work on our course who are working professionally, one of whom is Sandra Wagrandall, who's on the screen right now. She's Hi. one of our core tutors, and um, I'll let her explain her background and what she teaches in a second. We also have Helen Thatcher who teaches wigs and um, she works for Opera Australia. We have Kathy Malik who comes from um, screen and television and film. So her background, she's worked on films like Mad Max and she worked on, I believe she worked on Gatsby. So she's been in the industry working on recent films. Um, we have Rachel Del Santo who works in opera as well. We also have Tanya who's a hairdressing trainer and Colin Wilson who's a prosthetics and special effects artist who's just come off the recent Thor film and um, one more Cynthia Samango who is um, actually a curly hair specialist so one of the things we've done in the last two years is we've bumped up the hairdressing skills in our course to include curly hair for um, styling if in case people are working on people of color or people with curly hair um, it's not something that's really been included in TAFE versions of this qualification in the past. It's usually very white Caucasian straight hair and how do you style it? So we've decided to include more into the qualification to look at how you style curly hair as well. And finally, before I pass over to Sandra, I just want to mention that, as I said at the beginning, this course comes with a vet student loan. The vet student loan this year covers about $16,000 of the actual qualification cost. It doesn't cover the full cost of the qualification, but it covers quite a large percentage. And I believe next year it'll cover even more. So the actual amount that you pay up front, front for the training will be um, a lot less because you will have the vet student loan that will cover a significant portion if you're in, able to access it, um, if you're an Australian citizen. Um, 
and if you are interested in accessing it. Um, I've seen someone pop a question through as I've been talking. I'm gonna, we'll come back to the questions towards the end, but if you come up with anything you want to ask a question, please start typing them now and we'll come through to them. Just we'll build up a bank of questions that we can answer when we get towards the end. But now I'm going to introduce Sandra, who's one of our wonderful tutors, phenomenal woman, and she's going to talk about her background. Uh, she's going to talk about what she teaches in the course and the practical components of the course, what she looks for in students, in applicants, because she's also a member of our interview panel. And uh, yeah, where this course can take you. So off you go, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Um, pleasure to be with you this evening. Um, as Manny introduced me already, my name is Sandra Sandra Grandel. I'm born in Austria, Vienna. Um, I grew up there, did my first training at the Academy for Makeup and Hair in Vienna, and um, did further education all over the world. Um, and somehow I ended up here in Australia. So um, my main focus in the moment, I was doing lots of different things. Um, I started out many, many years ago in Austria, um, working on theatre productions. Um, I went then more into fashion and did um, London Fashion Week, Milan, um, New York over the years. Um, and now here in Australia, um, I got more into um, the TV work, TV commercials. I do lots of commercials in the moment that I totally love to do, uh, music videos. So um, yeah, I have a wide, wide range. I also did lots of um, film productions um, back home in Europe um, over the years. And I do makeup as well as hair and um, I can't, Dress it often enough to like, please, uh, you know, start to love both hair and makeup um, and also wigs, of course, and special effects because the wider um, um, the range um, easier, you know, when it comes to your skills, the more jobs you get. And especially with hair and, ma and makeup um, in lots of different productions, like, as I said, TV commercial, music videos, fashion. Um, it's always good um, to have these kind of skills. And I guess that was also the reason why we came up with um, um, the course version as we have it right now with all the units that we have chosen um, because it gives you a really good um, basic, you know, industry knowledge in, for lots of different um, genres. Um, as Mani already said, um, we have um, one really big chunk is um, the wig styling as well as the wig making. And I know for fact in Australia, there are people always look for wig makers or wig stylists because we don't, we still don't have enough here. Um, so that is something um, that we can definitely offer here that um, you really work with the best. Uh, Helen Thatcher is one of the best in the country and um, she also worked a lot overseas. Um, and another big thing is also all our productions that we are doing, uh, all the stage productions um, that I can truly say no other college would offer because all our productions um, you will work on um, um, professional, you know, industry productions and um, not any, you know, experiment that's done uh, somewhere in the basement. So uh, you learn to work um, with actors, with directors. Um, you even will see how to, you know, how the mic affects your wig or maybe your makeup application. Um, these are all things that are amazing to see and you can't really teach them in class. So you have to be there and you have to see it and that what NIDA can definitely offer you. Um, so, yeah, we start, as Mani already mentioned, um, with all the basic training of hair and makeup. Um, 
that means you don't have to have, when you come and join us, you don't have to have uh, any knowledge of hair and makeup because I know sometimes um, it can happen uh, that you get slightly nervous and think, oh, maybe other people have more experience that I, than I do. Um, it's really, we start um, with all the basics and we promise you um, from the beginning to the end, um, you will see like, um, how much your skills improve in all these different areas. Um, I mentioned productions, um, so you can expect um, fabulous opportunities. Um, one, for example, is working on Triple J music videos um, that normally happens in term two, where you will work um, with a director, with the band or singer, um, where you create um, as a team, um, your, as a team, uh, you will try and, you know, really uh, design and create all the makeup looks and the hair looks, sometimes include special effects. Um, so Triple J is a, a very um, interesting and fun production that you're placed on, especially um, you get credit for it. And that's maybe the first time where you see your name under music video. Um, and that is pretty exciting, I believe. Um, another great production um, we do is uh, the Weimar Cabaret. Um, that is a production um, in-house at NIDA. And that is one of your first productions um, where you will quickly learn and see how sometimes difficult it can be um, to accommodate your actor that you have in your chair that is maybe highly nervous. How do you um, communicate uh, with a director? How um, to work within a team um, to, to design and create certain looks and bring your ideas to the table. Um, and then towards the end of uh, the year, you will have a placement on um, the Festival of Emerging Artists, um, where you work on different productions, one of them, for example, Pinchgat Opera, um, and that is always very exciting. Um, and um, yes, yeah, something that really prepares you for um, the industry, the real world out there. Um, that is also something I want to mention. It, as you have heard before from Mani, this course is a diploma course. That means it, it involves quite a few assessments. Um, and sometimes assessments sound scarier than they are because all our assessments are industry-based, meaning um, that uh, you can use these assessments at the end and really go out and present your portfolios that you create there. Um, you learn how to budget, um, you learn how to do face charts, you actually learn how to pitch your ideas and that is all included in your assessments. So it's something um, that is actually very fun to do um, so I think the word assessment is, yeah, does not always really, if you agree, Mani, does not always agree really with, with what we do because it's so much fun. One example, an assessment in the first term is your big first photo shoot um, where you create three different looks um, in fashion, bridal and she beauty, where you find your own models, you work together with the photographer um, to bring your idea um, to life. Um, and it's a very fun exercise where you research your looks beforehand, where you come up and create your portfolios. Um, and that's actually an assessment. So you can use this assessment straight away and um, use the photos for your Instagram pages, your websites, um, any kind of online portfolios. Um, yeah, or it is a first step to introduce yourself as a young artist. Um, a little bit maybe that could be interesting for you when it comes um, to um, industry and work placements. Um, 
we are super proud and very excited every year to hear where our um you know former students um ended up to work and sometimes i'm i'm you know i'm jumping for the toy for them um we had uh, some amazing success stories um some of our students uh started to work on um i think Thor movie and um Another girl right now, she jumped a few weeks ago before the lockdown, of course, on a plane to go to Melbourne to work on Frozen the musical. Um, we have um, quite a few um, students uh, that even before they finished started to work uh, for very established uh, makeup houses and um, such as um, Mecca and manage already one of their biggest stores. Um, so there are lots of success stories and I guess it is up to you what you want to bring to NADA and what, what you want to take um, from us because um, the opportunities are endless and um, you will meet so many amazing people at NADA. We are like a very big family um, and um, People that you meet at night are, are maybe long life friends and um, you maybe give each other one day um, the most amazing job opportunities. So, yeah, it is something that's very exciting. And um, this course, I think, and, and as I said, I'm, I'm working as a makeup artist and hairstylist now for the last, I don't know, over 20 years um, or more, I guess more, uh, but that doesn't matter, uh, all over the world. And, um, all, and I, was, I also had the pleasure to teach in lots of different um, colleges and institutions and institutions in NIDA is um, for sure um, the place to be, um, to get your training as a makeup artist, hairstylist and special effect artist. Um, if you decide, um, oh, that's something for me, uh, that sounds really interesting, uh, please apply. And um, we would love to invite you for an interview. Um, and the in, even the interview process, I guess, is a very fun and creative one um, because we ask you to bring on the day of your interview, if you get invited, um, to bring a portfolio. And um, that's, I guess that's the time where you can really show your creativity, um, where you can really show what you maybe did so far or where your interests lie. And... Um, it's, it's very exciting um, to, if you think of it, maybe start to work on that now and collect your work you already did, or um, it does not necessarily have to be hair and makeup because quite often we get asked, what do I put in? I never did hair. Um, we don't necessarily want to see the perfect hair and makeup looks. What we want to see is you. Um, we want to see your creative side. Uh, that can be um, your paintings, your drawings, um, that can be, I don't know, um, your videos that you create, your cartoons you draw, um, that can be any kind um, of work uh, that you did maybe in school when you were part of musicals and did the makeup for your uh, for fellow students. So um, it's there, there are endless possibilities with this portfolio. Um, as I said, it doesn't mean uh, you already have to show us um, your makeup and hair skills because we, therefore we are here um, to, you know, that you can um, really learn that with us what's, what's um, really important and really ask from the industry. So I'll just sort of pop in and quickly say yeah. something. We had a student, just as a, an anecdote, we had a student apply two years ago who said in an interview that she'd never done makeup on anybody else's face before. Mm. And she thought she wasn't going to get in. Um, but when we saw her portfolio, it was all makeup she'd done on herself. Um, it was examples of her sketchbooks from school and her art that she could do. So we knew she could draw. 
and we knew she could apply makeup. And then also during the interview, Sandra hasn't mentioned, but we do a practical task where we ask you to use your own makeup kit, so your own basic makeup that you have. We ask you to bring it with you and then design something with it. So actually draw on a page with makeup um, to create a face chart. And the work that she did was just so beautifully applied. We knew she'd be fine. She just had never worked on anybody else's face before. And she broke down in tears. Oh, she broke down in tears on the first day um, mm -hmm. when we offered her. And then obviously uh, we had the first day of the course because she was so shocked she got in. Um, <laughs> and she was really uh, nervous as well. The point, I, the reason I mention her is because she's just come off working on Thor. So mm -hmm. she's graduate from oh, two years ago. Yes. Yeah. She was such an amazing student. She, as I said, she came straight from school. She'd never worked on anybody else's face before. She did our course and we had some um, secondment opportunities come up uh, midway through or towards, must have been towards the beginning of this year. Uh, mm -hmm. And she threw her CV in, in the, um, it, I said, send me your CV. She gets sent me a CV. I put her forward with a recommendation and she's just come off working on Thor. So you never know where your career will end up and you never know with the skill set that you might have, don't undersell yourself. Because mm. she was she was in from the moment we saw her at interview. Um, but as I say, she didn't have a portfolio, so to, so to speak. She, she was straight from high school. And she hadn't even done formals or anything. She'd just done herself. And and I think um, Manu will agree. Like we we look for um, somebody special, right? Because it's quite easy. Everybody can put uh, eyeliner on, I believe, or learn how to put lipstick on. But we 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 look for this, this special talent that can be because you're an amazing drawer or you do the best uh, drag um, application. Um, or um, you are fantastic in bringing it all together into character looks amazingly well. Uh, but we look for somebody um, that's creative, um, that's interested to collaborate. Um, and we want to see, you know, um, a versatile pool of people. So um, don't try to be the same, try to be different. Uh, that what I always think is really important, right? Don't don't think there's any standard student that like uh, that that we think should come to to NIDA, right? Be you um, and show that um, in, you know we, we like to see that um, your 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 creative um, persona and. Um, I think that makes it so special, you know, the whole course, because I think that's how you can learn a lot from each other. Um, we are all different, but I think we all are here because we love, that's how I feel, we all love makeup or we all love hair so much. And yeah. I would love to show you this magic world of hair and makeup because that's what I fell in love with. And that's something that I think is so amazing because you can do it all over the world, wherever you are. Um, look at me, I never thought I would end up in Australia and here I'm sitting now, right? Um, many years later, but, um, and going, I was always thinking I only want to do fashion. Uh, what I did for a while and then I did see it and then I did filming and I do TV commercials and then I did that and that and that. So um, I think also keep your mind open and, and um, maybe you start and you think, oh, that's what I want to do. And um, by the end of your journey, you end up to be in a complete different story and you love it and you don't want to do anything. Well, this, one of the first things we do is say, what are you interested in during the interview? And we get someone say prosthetics and someone says special effects and somebody says, oh, I like working in theatre and someone says fashion. And it's interesting because our course covers all of those things and you have to be open to learning all of them and people change their mind and then they start to go oh, actually no I really like special effects now I think having a class full of people who just want to work on runway is boring yeah. <laughs> um, I mean having a having a class full of people who 
look the same is also boring. You know, to have everybody with straight hair and white skin would actually not be useful in learning. You know, we like to have a diverse cohort. We like to have people with darker skin tones, lighter skin tones, wider faces, round faces, heart-shaped faces. Um, we've got a couple of boys in our class for the first time this year. We also have a gender diverse student this year. So having a range of people and a range of faces to work on and a range of interests keeps mm. it interesting. Keeps it interesting for the students in the class because you're working on each other. And it, you're also working, one thing to point out is, you know, you're constantly working on each other's face. We're not working on pieces of paper here. We're, we're actually applying makeup to someone's face all year. Um, and that could be your, it could be someone else in the classroom. It could be a guest that you bring in. It could be your mum. It could be models. It could be cast members from productions, all sorts of people. You're going to work on every different type of face we can we can find basically in the building to get you as much experience as possible. And if you're interested in special effects, but you're doing a look for fashion, you can include something to do with that. You know, you can use different products in different ways. If you're interested in drag, but you're doing something for a stage character, they lend themselves across to each other. So, so yeah, I think Sandra's point about diversity, it just makes it more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, if everybody, everybody's different and, and find your way to shine and stand out because that's what we're really looking for. Yeah. And I think um, this course definitely gives you all these opportunities because I know sometimes um, young artists ask themselves, why should I spend money and go to, you know, a college? I'm maybe already great. I maybe have already a big Instagram following and um, that's that's all good and great. And, and um, I don't want that that is can be you know all amazing but I'm thinking if you want a really good skill set um as an step to be one day maybe an established makeup artist hairstylist or um a special effects artist I think um you need to work on other people you need to get all this input you need to get feedback um and that what I guess um, some of these um, self-taught artists miss sometimes because they can only do quite often one look um, or, or to this one look, do, them on them, do it on themselves. But then if you ask them if they can do a character look and apply a bold cap, um, they may be pretty short. Or, or if they can take direction. I think that's yes. the other thing is yeah. that we do so many collaborative projects. You yeah. work with so many different directors and so many different performers. You learn how to deal with um, interesting people <laughs> or how to problem solve difficult situations or work with different types of personalities. And you understand that you are part of a team. You're not necessarily, you know, the example you've just given, Sandra, of the person who has an amazing Instagram following is always front and centre. Mm. But makeup artists and hairstylists on set are not front and centre. The performers are. So you learn how where you fit in that hierarchy and where you fit in that professional status and who, and where it is that you should put your importance and how to work with different people. I just want to make another point is, um, you know, we really do, Sandra was saying before, we really do prepare you for that. Um, we only take 14 students a year. We don't run several makeup courses throughout the year and keep taking students like other um, TAFE may do or other private providers. We take 14 and that is our 14 for the year. This is only our sixth, I think, delivery of this course. And yeah, I, we've got less than 100 in our alumni. So not even that, I think we've probably got about 70 in our alumni. So that means that whenever a job offer comes up, mm. we know everyone personally and we know who we can put forward and who would represent us really well. And what we do in part of the course is we make sure that you're completely prepared. You know, we we provide professional photography. Whenever you work on an event or a shoot or something for the course um, that is a, a big event, it comes with a photographer who takes the photos and we give you those photos. You're not paying for them, whereas you might pay for them at a TAFE. Um, we every time you do a production or event or triple j it goes on your cv so you're actually working on things that are 
professional standard uh, um, productions that actually can go on your CV when you leave. Uh, you can put it on your IMDb, you can put it on your Instagram, you can put it on your website, whatever. We talked to you about how to set up a website, we talked to you about how to set up the social media. So all of these things, you actually leave how to put together your professional portfolio. By the last day of the course, you have all these things there ready to go. So you just step out and, you, and work on the networks you've built. So there's that uh, personal approach, I think, is the point I'm trying to make here. Um, we take 14 students a year. We have seven or eight core tutors. So the actual attention to um, detail that you get and the, the personal relationships that you can form with the tutors are great as well. Um, we have so many guest artists come in as well. I mean, across the year in the classroom, you'd have over more than enough for one person mentor per student um, in relation to how many people we take. So, yeah. It is, we, it, there is a caring relationship there. There yes. is a supportive relationship there for the students. And I guess, um, as you said, man, like um, th these core tutors, they always, we still all constantly work in the industry. And that means we always look for assistance or we know people that look for assistance. So um, you, you know you uh, you have lots of opportunities. We help you to network or we bring you to a certain sets or so, depending on you know all the COVID restrictions right now, but as often as we can bring you to to um, on set and and um, work with us. so you get really um, the inside and you can start to to connect and and network whilst you're still in Nara. Yeah, um, I think we'll, we'll take some questions, Sandra, and cool. then we can talk about what we, one thing we haven't really talked about is how to apply. So we can explain yeah. that in a bit more detail too. So I've got a couple of questions here. And if you have any questions while you're listening, please feel free to type them. Um, we'll try and answer all of them if we can. That's what we're here for. Um, so the first question that came through is, uh, the first point was lovely to say that we have a curly hair specialist. Thank you. We've, we've tried hard with that. We, um, we have a hair, one of our core tutors is curly hair specialist. We've got several hairdressers in our um, core tutors as well. Uh, we try to have people of colour, so we have a diverse bunch of tutors who cover that content. And we've also found people from industry. So Chrissy Zamura is one person who has actually just worked on the Nine Perfect Strangers television show and is a big curly hair advocate against TAFE. Um, she's one of our uh, connections for this aspect, but we also have Cynthia Samango who comes in to teach several sessions and she is a, a product developer. So she has a product called Embrace for Every Curl and she also is a um, qualified trainer as well and assessor. So she's a fantastic person to have on our team. And uh, not only does she teach curly hair, but she also provides the product that you use and why she developed those products for curly hair. So it's really interesting. Um, but she said, do you have to have prior experience working with hair for the course? Um, you don't need any um, experience um, at all. Um, even if you never had a THD in your hand or you don't know what that is, that's totally fine. Um, I will show you what it is and how to use it. Um, I know um, hair is always a bit daunting. It's like oh, hair styling. I don't know what to expect. I don't know what to do. I never did anything. Um, I promise you need uh, to know anything about it. We start from just the very basics. Um, you will learn the different types of hair, the different, you know, hair structure, what the different types are, what products to use for different hair types, um, what um, thermal tools you use. Um, we do um, upstarts for long hair. Um, you will learn how to do the perfect blow dry because that's something that's really important and you learn that at the very beginning. Um, because if you believe it or not, but uh, if you're good, blow dryer, uh, you get easily assisting tops um, or you can even do Saturdays and in your neighborhood and do blow dries, uh, be the blow dry bar there and you can make quite a bit of money. So I know that from lots of my students, they do that. Um, anyway, and, and most most of our students have no um, 
Yeah, most of them, Mani, you agree, right? Have, have no experience. Had, Maybe one or two hairdressers. Yeah, we've had a couple of hairdressers come through who still do that just to refresh yeah. their skills. Um, but majority, yeah, haven't done yeah. hair before or have done hair for formals or for, yeah. you know, they've learned it from YouTube, but nothing. Yeah. No. And when it comes to wigs, um, almost nobody has experience with wigs apart from um, some of our students that maybe uh, performed as drag queens before and, and know how to apply wigs or how to style wigs. Um, but as I said, if it's makeup, if it's hair, special effects or prosthetics, um, you don't need to know anything beforehand. It's, um, it's why you're coming to the course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you need to be open to learning it. Yeah. Um, and we say several times straight from the beginning, like Sandra's even just said now, people are less likely to employ a hairdresser and a makeup artist separately these days, particularly if you want to work in television. They want to employ someone who can do both. So, and that's what we're trying to prepare you for. So, if if you're looking to just be a straight makeup artist, um, you might find work on films, but you're more likely to be employed in every everything mm -hmm. if you can do both. Because, for example, also with lots of the theatre productions nowadays, it's always called the wig and makeup department. Yeah, or you actually, yeah, department. wigs, wigs and hair. And yeah. then makeup is the the third thing. So yeah, yeah. you need to prioritize those skills. A um, couple of interesting questions here. How would the course? This is quite funny and very um, topical. How would the course work if the pandemic and lockdown continues next year? Fingers crossed it doesn't. So we, oh, I can provide you the very current example that's happening right now. Um, <laughs> we started the current version of our course in. Oh, like I can give you last year's example too. We were meant to start in April. We didn't start till June because uh, of last year's lockdown. Oh no, that's wrong. That's, we didn't start till July and we ended up finishing in February. This year we started in April with the intention to finish in December, but because of the last month's lockdown and future this month's lockdown, um, we've not yet returned to class yet. We're returning online for five weeks mm -hmm. as of next as of Monday um, but we were meant to actually return to class two weeks ago so we've we've had to shift our delivery for term two which is actually pushed back our delivery for term three but in 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 the and we're probably going to finish again in February so it's the course has extended to run from April through to February not ideal but this is a practical course and in order to get through all the assessments and to learn the skills, there's only so much you can learn online for wigs. You can watch how to do it, but we're actually assessing you physically doing it. So we need to find time face to face for that. Um, we also need to find time to, for you to do the collaborations. So by finishing in February, this cohort finishing in February, we actually get a chance to do a really good production with some new students starting next year earlier some of the new cohorts starting next year and it worked really well um, last time so we're looking forward to that but as I say these are some examples of how we've had to pivot for this course because if you want to do an online diploma of screen and media specialist makeup services they exist there are training providers who do this entire course online go and find that person go and find that um, RTO they exist that's what you pay for but it's not what our students have paid for. Our students have paid for the collaborative face-to-face -face opportunities and are open to giving the course a bit more time to, in order to get that out of the course. And it's more expensive for us to provide that by extending the length of the delivery time. But as I said, we only take 14 students a year and we want to help everyone as much as we can to move out into industry and to go out with a qualification. So um, the best way to do that is to just extend the course length, really. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. Um, if we, the question was, how will it work if the pandemic continues next year? I think next year there'll be an expectation that more people are vaccinated. By the time we go to deliver next April, um, I, the majority of the country hopefully will be vaccinated and we just will have safe COVID um, procedures in place. I, I don't see 
Australia, unless there's a really awful variant that comes out again, I don't know whether we would have the same sort of lockdown as we currently are experiencing. I, I personally think it would be more like the UK or, or Europe where most people are vaccinated, so we just get on with it. But um, if we can't deliver in April, we, we might delay the start date of the course or we might find alternative methods of delivery. Yeah. Um, another question here is how many applicants do you generally get each year? Uh, we get several applicants each year. Um, we don't get as many as the acting course of NIDA, the Bachelor of Fine Arts acting course. I see that one of the um, people who was going to come this evening has actually applied for that course. They have thousands of applicants. We, we don't have thousands of applicants for this. It's hard to predict how many we're going to have because this year the application process is free, whereas last year it was a $75 application fee. So I don't know if I can answer how many we're going to get, but all I can say is we see everybody. So if you apply, yeah. we will either do a Zoom call to see you or we will meet you face to face if we can, but we meet every single applicant and we talk to every single applicant. Um, so it is a personal process and, um, yeah, I don't think the question of how many people do we get should put you off applying. We will still meet you and we will still be interested in you as a person, as an applicant. I've got one more question. Please send more, more questions if you have any, but I've got one more on here. Um, what do you look for during the application process as you don't get to meet us physically until some of us get to the interview? Okay, so let me clarify this again. The application process is in two stages. So the first stage you apply through the website and we ask you to provide uh, evidence of your citizenship because we can only take Australian citizens and permanent residents on this course. Uh, we can also take New Zealand citizens because there's a, a deal with that, but um, we don't take international students. So just to make that point, we ask for evidence of citizenship. We ask for a photograph of you that if you get in, that photograph ends up on your student card. And we ask for, um, uh, a CV, bear with me, I'm just going to bring it back up again. Yeah, no, a CV, yeah. Oh, no, no, we don't ask for a CV, sorry, we ask for your... For the video. Um, most recent uh, school certificate. So if you've just finished high school or if you've gone to study elsewhere, we ask for your most recent qualification to so see, see that you've, you're, you're working at the correct level to enter this course. Uh, it's a diploma level course, so you must have completed the HSC before um, moving into this level of training. And then finally, as Sandra said, this year we've changed it and we've asked for a one minute video as well. That video is literally just an introduction. Hi, my name is so-and-so, I'm from here. Uh, I really love makeup. Explain to us why, why you're interested in this course, what you've done before and, and that you're excited to meet us. That's it, record it on your phone. It's just a chance for us to see you and listen to you before you come into the interview room and it means that we don't have to spend time in the interview sorry <laughs> we don't have to spend time in the interview room getting to know you as much because we've met you in the video so we can talk about other things as well in the interview so don't feel put off by the video record it on your phone and then send it in it's just an introduction just to say hi to us secondly as it is said we interview everyone so in the application, we just want you to introduce yourself through the video, through the documents you submit and through the sort of short answer questions. It gives us something to talk to you about in the interview. But then when we see you for the interview, we also do another couple of things. Sandra, do you want to talk about what we look for in sure. the interview? Um, and, and please um, be assured there are a few dates for interviews that we give you. So it's not like one date and if you because of any reason can't make it, uh, bad luck. Um, so you can be assured there are a few dates and you can choose one of the dates. And if you're maybe um, from, you, you know, interstate or um, uh, currently overseas, or I, I don't know, whatever, you, you know, um, your situation is right now, we can always arrange a Zoom meeting. We did that before, it worked really well. Um, so you don't have to be, uh, to worry. Um, the interview is, I love the interviews. It's always um, nice to meet young artists, interested people. We start off with, um, 
a nice chat. Uh, what brings you? Um, we want that you engage with the others, um, with the other applicants, and um, you tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, the other part then is we ask you kindly to bring in a reference letter that can be from um, a school teacher, from your principal, that can be from, I don't know, um, um, something you've worked on. Somebody you've worked with, you've worked on. Local theatre. Yes. Um, you know, reference letter and then also a portfolio. Um, and the portfolio, as we said earlier, can be anything, surprise us, have fun, be creative. It can show your hair, your makeup looks that you did on others, that can be your character looks, that can be your drag looks that you did or your special effects stuff that you did so far. But that can also be your cartoons you draw, that can be um, your designs that you come up with because you did styling before. Um, we had a, we had a, applicant last year who's in a band who yeah. helped design looks and styled the the band for their music videos and their shoots yeah. she had photographs of that yeah so the, the, i think the more you can show us uh the better like um really take time doing this portfolio and make sure it reflects you as an artist you as a person and shows your creativity and um yeah, that's the portfolio. And then uh, we ask you that something maybe you can start to prepare. Um, because as Mani said, if you apply, we see everybody, we're excited to meet you. Um, but we ask you during the interview uh, to create a face chart. And sometimes if you haven't done this beforehand, it can be a bit um, scary. You sit in front of a white, you know, um, paper with face chart on it and you have no idea. Maybe as a suggestion, start to Google how to create a face chart or sit in, you know, have a face chart and try and get a feel if you haven't done it before, how to do that. This is an exercise because we really want to see um, your creativity, we want to see your drawing skills, but that doesn't mean you have to have the greatest drawing skills. I can say about myself, I love to draw on faces, I love to draw on bodies, um, but I was never the most amazing drawing school, you know, doing it on paper. But you can learn that. Um, and that's something that I always say in class too. Um, artists are not always born at, uh, as artists. Like you, if I guess everybody's an artist because we are all creative creatures, right? But you can learn a lot. You can learn lots of skills. You can learn how to create a perfect painting or the perfect face chart. You can learn how to create the perfect eyeliner and the perfect lips. So, um, yeah, that's something you maybe want to prepare a little bit and 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 see how face charts are done. Um, and then, did I forget anything, Mani? Oh, and then a few questions we ask, right? We talk about them and then you write them down. Yeah. And, and then also there's obviously time for Q&A yeah. and time to ask yeah. about the course and, and, you know, what the costs are and all that sort of thing, invoicing, everything that you need to ask. Um, but yeah, I think Sandra makes a really good point. We've, you don't have to research what a face chart is before the interview. We've had people turn up that haven't. Um, we've also had people ask, oh, if I have to bring makeup, do I need to bring an amazing makeup kit? No, you can bring just a couple of things. Bring, you know, a, 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 a eyeshadow palette and an eyeliner and a lipstick. Like and your brushes, yeah. Yeah, you can just use that. Um, but it's just a chance for us to see how you work with those things, to see certain traits. Maybe um, we've had people before that have come from like TAFE to see techniques that you might have learned or techniques that you haven't learned. Um, it just gives us a chance to sort of make notes on things that we can help you with if you are part of the course. Um, you know, oh my gosh, they're amazing. Their portfolio was phenomenal. Uh, they've done so much work on people's faces and school formals and whatever, but they do everything um, with a really fine brush. I don't know, I'm trying to think of an example, you know, or, or they, they um, 
they're really heavy handed with the with the eyebrow pencil. So we can we can see those sorts of things and, and help you with those really intricate detailed things um, during the interview too. And what uh, I guess uh, is all the important money. Um, I think we also want to see um, hopefully you are a team player because makeup artists, hairstylists, everybody like uh, working on set, everybody that works at night, we are team players, right? Um, a production does not work with one person. Uh, productions need teams, shoots need teams. Um, we need a good team to run a good course. So I guess um, we really look for people that are good team players, that are good communicators. Um, that are happy to give feedback, but also receive feedback. Um, all that, I guess, is something that's really important because that's what the industry looks for too. You can be the most amazing artist and create the most amazing um, looks. If you're not approachable, if you're not a team player, um, you will not land the jobs that you maybe hope for. So yeah, I guess that's something that's maybe quite important to to yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we kind of covered the interview. Uh, I haven't got any more questions. Anybody else got any more questions before we wrap up? Um, you've still got us here for a few more minutes and we're happy to answer anything that you might have. Trying to think of anything that we haven't covered yet, Sandra. I think we've covered quite a bit. <laughs> also, I don't know where everybody is from. Um, um, Travelling maybe close so far, um, but also be assured uh, we always have students that you know come from I don't know all different cities and towns of Australia. I guess it's also something where I think like mm, should I. If you are from further away, should I really go to Sydney? Should I really do it? Um, like, it, neither. Like, there are really good communities, you know, that 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 start to build with every course and and really good friendships. And all the students that I met, and in every course, we had a few students from, you know, um, not necessarily Sydney, Melbourne. Um, I don't know, Canberra and so on. And um, talking to all of them, um, they quite quickly integrated themselves, you know, found a good network of friends um, with other NIDA students, um, not only from the makeup class necessarily. So um, it's something, if that holds you back, please. Um, um, think again and <laughs> and think positive or if you have any questions you can always ask us again uh, because it's something um, that should not hold you back from when when um, we what we do is when we've got our list of who's in the course we actually provide it to the student council of NIDA and they invite you to be part of a Facebook group and then on that Facebook group you can actually be connected to every other student that studies at NIDA so if anybody's looking for a roommate that's where they advertise it. And if you're looking for somewhere to move to, that's where you can put it on there. So what we find is before we've even started, I think they even have social events before we even start the year. So you, you actually meet everyone before you meet us, really, most of the time. So the, that network is out there before, straight from the beginning. Uh, two more questions. Uh, first one is, is there parking on campus or is public transport port is preferred. We're right opposite UNSW. There are buses and light rail and straight to our door. So we do say public transport is board is preferred. There's no parking on campus, but there's street parking around. The only challenge there is we're right opposite UNSW and it's a huge university. So the parking is limited. No, that's not right. There is parking, but close parking is limited <laughs> so um yeah you might find that you, you do if you do drive tonight you might have to have a little bit of a 10 minute walk from where you parked but um yeah there's no parking on campus but we do have the light rail that's literally to the door um and, and, and i'm i drive my car there and i can truly say i get always a parking spot within a four to five minute walk so yeah it's it's not too bad <laughs> Um, and then the final question I've got is, does the Zoom interview differ slightly from the campus? So what we try to do is we try to have a group interview. 
So if we've got enough people who can come on the particular day, we try to have a group interview face-to-face -face where possible. If you're interstate, um, we try to collect as many people together on Zoom to have a group Zoom interview. But if that's not possible because of, um, you know, availability, then we'll just do an individual interview with you. So preferably, we like to do it as a group because we like to have everyone have a chance to talk. And as Sandra said, collaborate and, and talk about their background and meet each other as well before the course. Because when the first day comes, half the people have already met each other just by being in the same interview room or the same Zoom. So they'll be like, oh, I recognize you. And that's the quickest way to form friendships. So it's a group interview where possible. And um, yeah, we do that to keep it as informal as possible, I guess is the point. But if we have to do a one-to-one, -one, we will do a one-to-one, -one. yeah. Um, I haven't got any other questions. I'm just thinking if there's anything else, Sandra, that we want to cover. I guess uh, we're talking a lot, right? <laughs> uh, no, I think um, I no, I think we covered everything. But what I can truly say, um, I love makeup, I love hair, I love theatre, I love film, I love television, I love fashion. Um, so if you love it too and you really think uh, there could be something for you, please apply because it's a really amazing course um, and it can open so many doors. Um, don't be scared about any application processes. You know, it's easy. The video is easy. Have fun with it. And, and we really hope we see you at the interviews. Yeah, uh, no, somebody said thank you for doing this info session. I was at work all day and looking forward to it. So you're more than welcome. Um, and thank you for the feedback. And hopefully this session, as I said, was trying to say when I was muted is um, we're not scary. We are here to support you. We want the best that we can possibly find and we're willing to meet everyone in order to find those people and we want you to shine. So if you've got any questions about how to write the application or how to make the video or what happens in the interview, email vocational at nida.edu.au and someone from our department will get back to you. And um, yeah, we're, we're here to support. It's not Big Scary NIDA. We're one of the smaller courses at NIDA and we're... Um, yeah, we're here to have a network of, of, of people who love the industry. Yeah. So thank you very much and have thank a wonderful you. rest of your evening. Thank you, Sandra.